Level zero. It's the landslide that doesn't look like a landslide at all. No crashing boulders, no dramatic hillside collapse, just dirt slowly inching its way downhill. This is soil creep, and it might be happening right under your feet right now. At first glance, it's almost laughable. We're talking about soil moving at millimeters per year. That's slower than your nails grow. But here's the thing. Creep never stops. It's a constant, quiet shift, driven by gravity, rain, freeze-thaw cycles, and time. It's the kind of movement that causes fence posts to lean, trees to grow at weird angles, and sidewalks to crack for no reason. You've probably seen the signs without realizing it. Soil creep doesn't grab headlines, but it's power adds up. On sloped terrain, decades of creeping can destabilize foundations, twist roads, and gradually transform entire hillsides. And unlike dramatic landslides, this one doesn't give you a warning. It's stealthy, relentless, kind of like nature's slow burn prank on civil engineers. In places like California or the Scottish Highlands, engineers have spent millions reinforcing slopes that looked stable until creep quietly warped them. And in the Appalachians, some cemeteries had to relocate graves after decades of soil movement slowly slid headstones downhill. Nothing says haunting like your final resting place drifting off without you. But don't get too comfortable. If soil creep is the opening act, the next level is when things finally break loose. When that top layer of earth stops creeping and starts sliding, it's no longer subtle. It's dangerous. And if you think a little rain can't cause real damage, level one is about to prove you very wrong. Level one. All this soil creeping downhill at the speed of a lazy snail seems harmless. Then, one rainy day, the hill decides it has had enough and suddenly lets go. That slow movement turns into a shallow debris slide, the first real dose of danger on our scale. Unlike soil creep, this level actually moves. A thin layer of soil, loose gravel, and small rocks breaks free from a slope and races downward. It usually happens right after heavy rainfall when water sneaks into the ground and starts acting like nature's lubricant. Once the soil is soaked and heavy, gravity takes over and the whole top layer slips like someone pulling a tablecloth out from under your dinner plates. Except in this case, the plates are trees, cars, roads, and sometimes entire houses. Shallow slides may look small on paper, a few feet thick, maybe only a couple hundred meters long but that is enough to bury a road in seconds or push a car into a ditch like it weighs nothing. You do not even need a mountain for this to happen. A steep roadside embankment can suddenly collapse just from one bad storm. Imagine driving past a slope that looks perfectly calm, then coming back the next day to find it sitting in the middle of the highway like a surprise gift from the hills. One of the most common scenes is a car stuck in a pile of brown, muddy rubble after a slide blocks a mountain road. People sometimes treat it like an inconvenience instead of a real geological event, but a small slide can bury someone alive, rip apart guardrails and shut down major routes for days. In 1995, a shallow slide in Italy buried parts of a village and killed dozens of people. It was not deep, but it was fast and impossible to outrun. Shallow slides are like the warm-up act. They are the warning that the ground is not as stable as it looks. Once the soil is loose, gravity starts thinking bigger, and the next step on our scale brings rocks into the picture. Big ones. The kind that do not slide quietly but fall with the force of flying cannonballs. Level 2. If level 1 was a slippery mess of mud and gravel, level 2 skips the polite warnings and goes straight for falling boulders. Welcome to the world of rock falls where gravity gets aggressive and cliff faces decide they're done holding it together. Rock falls are exactly what they sound like. Chunks of rock, sometimes the size of refrigerators, sometimes the size of buses, break off from a cliff and come crashing down with terrifying speed. There is no slow slide here. These things drop, and when they do, they hit with the force of a wrecking ball launched from the sky. What causes them? Sometimes it is water sneaking into tiny cracks, freezing overnight, and slowly prying the rock apart. Other times it is earthquakes, erosion, or even just the natural aging of the mountain. Gravity is always watching, waiting for its moment to take over, and once the rock loses support, it is freefall time. In 2017, a massive rockfall at Yosemite's El Capitan killed one climber and injured another. A slab of granite weighing over 1,000 tons detached without warning. It fell nearly 200 meters before smashing into the valley floor, releasing energy comparable to a small bomb. No rain, no storm, no obvious signs just a regular day that turned deadly in seconds. Rockfalls can reach speeds of over 100 kilometers per hour, and even if it is just a single boulder, the damage can be catastrophic. Entire homes have been wiped out by a single strike. Roads blocked, trails destroyed. Some towns have built huge rock-catching fences to protect themselves, which is basically admitting, yeah, we know the mountain might throw stuff at us. There is something uniquely terrifying about rockfalls. They are fast, violent, and almost impossible to predict. You can be walking beneath a calm cliffside one moment, and the next, it is raining stone. But rockfalls, for all their violence, are still just pieces breaking off. What happens when the entire slope doesn't fall off the mountain, but becomes the mountain, flowing like liquid? That is when we enter the disaster zone. And in level 3, things don't just fall. They move like a river made of earth, trees, cars, and everything in their way. Level 3. 
Now we step into the level where landslides stop acting like landslides and start behaving like monsters. This is level 3, the debris flow, sometimes called a mud flow, but that name really doesn't do it justice. Imagine a wall of mud taller than a truck, thick with broken trees, shattered concrete, and twisted cars racing downhill at 60 kilometers per hour. That is not a slow ooze. That is a liquid landslide with the speed of a freeway and the force of a freight train. And when it hits, it hits hard. Debris flows usually start with heavy rainfall or rapid snow melt soaking unstable slopes. That water saturates the ground until the soil turns into a thick soup. The more loose material it picks up, the more dangerous it becomes. Rocks, branches, fences, homes, it does not flow around obstacles, it absorbs them, and then it keeps moving. One of the most devastating examples happened in Vargas, Venezuela in 1999. After days of relentless rain, thousands of debris flows swept down the steep slopes above coastal towns. Some were over 10 meters deep. They crushed everything. Roads disappeared. Entire neighborhoods were erased. Official numbers say 10,000 people were killed but many believe the true number is even higher. And it is not just tropical places. In 2014, a debris flow struck Oso, Washington, wiping out an entire community in under a minute. Trees were flattened. Houses were swallowed whole. The hillside didn't just collapse. It liquefied. What makes debris flows so terrifying is their speed and unpredictability. You might see water trickling down a slope one minute, then suddenly hear a deep, roaring sound that feels too loud to be real. By the time you recognize what it is, it is already too late. Debris flows are the first truly catastrophic level in this series. They do not just move downhill, they erase what was there before, and they are just the beginning of what unstable ground can do. Because the next level isn't about mud or scattered rocks, it is about entire sections of land breaking away and turning the earth itself upside down. Prepare for level 4, where gravity starts rotating the rules. Level 4. Now we leave behind the rushing chaos of mud and debris and enter a different kind of disaster. One that doesn't just flow downhill. It twists. It rotates. It shifts the very shape of the land like a giant hand scooping up the earth and turning it sideways. This is the rotational landslide, and it is as strange as it is destructive. Picture a hillside that suddenly drops, but instead of crumbling in a straight line, the whole slope curves as it falls. Giant slabs of earth, rock, and vegetation slowly rotate backward while sliding down like a slow-motion flipping pancake made of soil and trees. Roads buckle, forests tilt, Buildings lean at odd angles or simply vanish into the ground. These movements often start deep underground. When a curved surface of weakness gives way, the upper layers of the slope begin to rotate outward and downward. It is slow enough at first to feel unreal. Some people report hearing cracking sounds. Others see trees begin to lean at the exact same angle, like nature is glitching. Then it picks up speed and tears open the ground. One of the most striking examples happened in La Conchita, California in 2005. A rotational landslide sent a massive chunk of hillside crashing into a neighborhood burying homes and killing 10 people. What made it worse? That same slope had already failed once before in 1995. People knew it was unstable. They just did not expect it to come back stronger and deadlier. Rotational slides are common in places with clay-rich soils, layered geology, and steep hillsides. The curved motion makes them especially dangerous because they shift large volumes of land deep below the surface. This is not just a surface problem. It is a foundation problem. And here is the terrifying part. Once a rotational slide starts, it often sets the stage for even even worse events. The ground is fractured, tilted, and weakened. Water seeps in, tension builds, and that is when gravity brings out one of its most violent moves. Because next is level 5, where we stop rotating chunks of land and start watching entire mountains break apart. And when that happens, nothing stays standing. Level 5. At this level, landslides stop being disasters and start becoming events of geological violence. We are no longer talking about soil, mud, or even small hillsides. We are talking about the collapse of entire mountains. Welcome to level 5, the rock avalanche. A rock avalanche is not just a fall or a slide. It is a full-scale detonation of a mountainside. Millions of tons of rock break loose and pulverize themselves on the way down, turning solid stone into a high-speed cloud of dust, gravel, and deadly force. And the terrifying part? These flows can move at over 300 kilometers per hour. That is faster than most commercial airplanes during takeoff. Unlike smaller landslides, rock avalanches do not follow a clean path. They launch, they bounce, they explode into fragments and blast across valleys. These events are incredibly rare, but when they happen, they transform landscapes. Take the 1970 Huascarán disaster in Peru. After an earthquake shook the region, a chunk of the north face of Mount Huascarán broke off. What followed was a rock avalanche mixed with ice and snow that traveled over 20 kilometers in minutes. It buried the town of Yungay and killed over 20,000 people. Nothing was left, not even the church. It was as if the town had never existed. Rock avalanches often happen after long periods of weakening. Rain, ice, tectonic shifts, 
cracks deepen over years or even centuries. Then, one trigger, an earthquake, a storm, a freeze-thaw cycle, is all it takes to send the mountain crashing down. Some avalanches are so violent, they create air blasts strong enough to snap trees miles away. These are not just deadly, they are unstoppable. No amount of early warning can hold back a collapsing mountain. Scientists have started using satellite imagery and drone scans to monitor at-risk peaks, but predicting the exact moment of failure is still nearly impossible. And as massive as a rock avalanche is, there is still one final level. Because sometimes, a falling mountain does not just destroy the valley below. Sometimes it crashes into a body of water so violently that it launches a tsunami. And when that happens, the disaster does not stop at the shoreline. It keeps going. Brace yourself for the last level. Level 6. This is the final level. The rarest. The most violent. The kind of event that does not just change the landscape, but rewrites the map. This is level 6, the Mega Landslide, and it is a disaster with global reach. Unlike smaller landslides, this level involves an entire mountainside collapsing into a body of water. Not sliding down a slope, not tumbling through a valley, but falling directly into a lake or ocean with such force that it launches a tsunami, sometimes hundreds of meters tall. One of the most shocking real-world examples happened in Latuya Bay, Alaska, in 1958. After a massive rockfall slammed into the narrow bay, it triggered a wave over 500 meters high. That is taller than the Empire State Building. Trees were stripped from the surrounding mountains. Everything in the wave's path was annihilated. And while only a few people were present to witness it, those who survived described it as something out of a nightmare. Boats were lifted like paper and thrown across the bay. The entire shoreline was scraped clean. And then there is the Storega Slide, which happened off the coast of Norway around 8,000 years ago. A massive underwater landslide collapsed into the North Atlantic, generating a tsunami that struck the coasts of Scotland, Norway, and possibly even parts of mainland Europe. It was powerful enough to flood huge areas and may have wiped out early human settlements. For some researchers, it is a chilling reminder of what the Earth is still capable of doing. Scientists have also warned about the Canary Islands, where part of a volcanic island could collapse into the Atlantic. If that happens, models suggest it could send a wave across the ocean, striking parts of the eastern United States. It sounds like science fiction but it is not. The threat is very real. These mega landslides are extremely rare, but when they happen, they are among the most powerful natural disasters on Earth. Not just collapsing land, but displacing oceans. They do not just reshape a valley, they reshape coastlines. Entire civilizations could be affected in hours, and that is the top of the scale. From creeping soil to continent-shaking collapse, landslides are far more than just falling dirt. They are one of nature's most unpredictable and devastating weapons.